welcome back. You're watching AYV Television. Don't forget to send your thoughts and comments to AYV News. And also, we are live on Channel 33 on DSTV. Now, in our final segment, with less than 18 days to the June 24th multi tier elections, this morning we are to discuss the preparedness, data, and also awareness raising, among other issues. In the studio, we have Adi Makoli from the main opposition All People's Congress Party, and we have Mohamed Touré, who is the director of operation at the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone. And in studio two, Mohamed El Ba has joined us from the ruling Sierra Leone People's Party. Good morning, gentlemen. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Now, uh, let me start with you, Mohamed. In terms of preparation, you know, again, I put this to you. We are in the rains, and a few weeks back you were here with Dr. Mahoy. You, she particularly was asking, you know, for what are your plans. So still on that, the plans that have been made to ensure that those who are, you know, ready to vote will be catered for. What are, the, what are those plans made for? Uh, thank you very much. Um, whenever I'm asked this question, my first comment is that we hope and pray that it doesn't rain on that day. Mm. Uh, but obviously, we cannot bank on, on hope and prayers. We, we definitely have to put in place mechanisms to ensure that in the event it does rain, we have systems in place to deal with the situation. We have identified um, centers uh, that require the construction of boats. Of course, most of our centers, our polling centers, are situated in schools. And most of these schools are going to serve as our polling stations. But there are so many other centers that are situated in open spaces, or the structures that are accommodating, that are hosting these polling centers cannot accommodate all the polling stations within themselves. Say, for instance, for places like Western Area Rural, Western Urban. You have a center with 15 polling stations, 10 polling stations, etc. So it is possible that that school structure cannot accommodate all 15 polling stations or, or all 10 polling stations, as the case may be. So we have identified all of these, and we, we have plans to construct boots, as we usually do for, for all elections. Of course, this is not the first elections we are conducting under the reins. We have planned to construct boots, which will, um, in a way, help to, to, to uh, 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 withstand the, the rain um, if it does come on pulling days, to at least ensure that our materials and staff are protected and that voting um, is not halted. Okay, uh, and, uh, and, uh, we have another program, uh, Salon Decides, and we were speaking about the indelible ink. Tell us more what's ready in that direction. Well, the, we have... Um, more than enough indelible ink mm. in the country. Um, we are, this indelible ink we are giving to us through the generosity of the Indian government. Um, some time ago, I'm sure it was aired on AYV because you had representatives there. We, the Indian government handed o over each quantity of indelible ink, which is, would be enough to cater for the entire elections. So two, uh, 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 um, uh, um, bottles of indelible ink will be supplied for every polling station because these are very small bottles, but we, we two can suffice to serve 300 uh, um, or more polling station uh, um, voters in the polling station. So we do have enough quantity of indelible ink to use. Okay. Be before Lamana comes in, you know, your theme for this year is vote saful, guna o saful, and again, you have signed um, MOUs with um, the ONS together with the Sierra Leone. Um, um, Police, rather, Office of National Security and the Ceylon Police. You know, what are your plans for those who do not wish to go home, unfortunately, if that happens? Well, uh, of course, the, the, this is not a new phenomenon. Um, it is part of the electoral process. It's part of the electoral uh, um, rules that once you vote in an election, you need to go home. And um, the law clearly stipulates those who are eligible to be within the confines of polling center. So we, in our discussions with the security sector, we have uh, 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 um, made it clear 
those who are supposed to be within the confines of a polling center. And it means if you are not eligible to be within the confines of a polling center, uh, then you, 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 you have to be uh, uh, um, taken out of that polling center. Well, one of the most contentious issues presently is the voters' register. The APC has been repeatedly asking for this aggregated voters' register. What's the status of that? Um, l let me come back and get some things right here. Um, in the first place, the APC has been asking for disaggregated data of the voter register. Mm -hmm. And this is completely different from the voter register, the voter register itself. And, uh, and you see, what has been happening is um, we've, we've not been uh, very much honest w with ourselves in this process. You remember after, um, in December, when the commission declared the voter registration figures. Mm -hmm. We did that given total number of registration per district and national data. And after that, we received, um, it, it, immediately after that, that, the APC began to raise questions about the ECSL not providing this aggregated voter registration data. There are several letters to the effect sent to the CSL in which the APC was specifically demanding this aggregated voter registration data. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That means they wanted voter registration figures per center. Mm -hmm. In other words, polling center 1001 mm -hmm. has 1,000 registered voters. Mm -hmm. Polling center 10005 have 3,000. Mm -hmm. That is what they wanted. The commission, as at then, told them and all political parties that we could not provide you with that figure. Why? Because election is a process. There are several activities that need to be concluded before we can provide to political parties this aggregated data by center. Mm -hmm. One such activity is, for instance, transfer of registration. Now, the law provides that as a registered voter, within a, within a period of time, you have the right to transfer your registration from one center to another center, if you so desire, mm -hmm. if you have changed place of residence. And we know we have to accommodate that because it's part of the law. The law. So when that happens, definitely, you will have a shift of uh, 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 vo voters, of voters from, se from centers to, to another center. A decrease in one and an increase in another, depending on the transfer. So because of that reason, for instance, and also because we had not distributed the voter registration card, we said we could not provide you with that information. But we made it clear that that information is going to be provided sooner uh, uh, once we've concluded these exercises. And once we concluded the transfer of voter registration and concluded uh, and the distribution of voter registration card as specified, we posted the disaggregated voter registration figure by center mm. on our website. And then what happens? The APC came back and said, no, that's not what we'll be asking for. We'll be asking for voter register, which is not true. I can read you a letter sent by the APC to the, the ECSL specifically uh, 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 um, requesting for disaggregated data by center, even making reference to the fact that our data uh, announced was announced based on districts, mm. district total and national total. But they would prefer disaggregated data by center. Mm. And when we, we posted that one on our website, they, they didn't even acknowledge that one. They rather came back and said, no, that's not what we asked for. Mm -hmm. We'll be asking you for this information, nobody receiving it, which is, which is completely false. Okay. We'll come back to you. Um, let's, let's move to Adi Macaulay. He has explained um, the process of how you, uh, what you ask for, and it has been provided. But repeatedly yesterday, the, the deputy chairman also did an open letter requesting the same. And you've been on social media, you know, raising concern on this issue. What is the APC asking for? 
Um, firstly, Lamrana, let me demystify the confusion the Director of Operations, Mr. Toure, is creating here. We have to know that there are distinction between the register and the number of voters. What he is alluding to is that they've provided us disaggregated numbers of people registered to vote. And all the letters, starting with the one on the 22nd of March, the 23rd of April, and I believe on the 4th of, 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 of May, June, what we are asking for is disaggregated voter register. Register is different from figures. Mm. When they were doing the display of voter, provisional voter register, it was a dis disaggregated voter register they displayed. What do I mean by this? When you go to a particular registration center, which is go also going to serve as a polling center, mm. all the people that are registered in that particular centers have their names exhibited. That is what we are asking for. What they've done is, they've given us, oh, this particular center, 500 people registered there. I don't know whether... Without the names? Without the names. I don't know whether... Of course, he just said it. Mm -hmm. He said he provided us the figures, the disaggregated figures. But what we are asking for is the register. And when you look at Section 13 of the Public Elections Act of 2022, it says that a voter register includes the name, address, photo, sex, signature, thumbprint of the voter. I am not sure. In all seriousness, he believes that numbers include all those information. But you know, let, let's just say this. Mm. Whenever you see a public institution like NEC is seeking a refuge in the law, in the face of public scrutiny, it is evidence that they are running away from accountability. And NEC cannot run away from accountability because it is the mandate of NEC to give us free, fair, and credible elections. And there is no way you can give to this country free, fair, and credible elections without you being accountable to the very people who are the end users of your services. Let, let me ask Mr. Tsuri, I can recall there was a display, you know, for verification, right? When yes. people were asked to go and verify their names, their dates of birth, and other uh, bio data as well. Um, are they saying that is what they are asking for? The, the register of the names of the people who registered at the centre and where they will be voting. Is there any problem for ECSL to provide that information? Okay, now, before that, let me, you know, when we talk, let's talk with facts, mm. with evidence, please. Now, I have here with me a letter written by the by the APC. You know, I can understand probably he is not the Secretary General of the APC and therefore he doesn't write these letters. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably he doesn't understand what has been, what the APC has been requesting for. Um, this is a letter dated 22nd March. And the, the subject is request for clarification on matters touching and concerning the 24th June 2023 general elections. General, general and presidential election management. Now, page two of this letter reads, further, the ECSL, after registration of voters, only publish final voter registration figures at national, regional, and district levels, and failed to publish disaggregated voter registration figures at polling center level. We are therefore requesting that the voter registration figures at polling center level be published immediately, not only because transparency and credibility um, of election management demands that, but because it is necessary for aiding the APC's election preparedness. It clearly speaks here that they are requesting for figures. Mm. Clearly. So what Mr. Macaulay is saying with all due respect, 
is completely erroneous. They were asking for disaggregated registration figures. I'm coming. What does the law, I'm coming. No, I'm quickly, coming. no I'm what coming. does the law say? Mm -hmm. ECSL should provide to political parties. Let, let's let's stick to that. What should you provide? Is it figure or what you've already provided, now, rather than what they are requesting? Now for? we are required to provide to the public registration data. Okay, and okay? that is what you've done. And that we've done it. And morally, morally, the CSL has always been in the habit of providing voter registry, voter register to political parties, mm -hmm. which we are going to do. We've done it in 2007, done it in 2012, 2018, and uh, uh, we are going to do it. Okay? So we that's what they're, what they're asking for is what you're saying you're going to provide. We definitely are going to do it. But <coughs> one thing I, I want to make, make clear here. Mm -hmm. You see, it is, it is, it is really uh, improper that when you, you ask for one thing and you are giving that thing, you come back and say, no, that's not what I asked for. I asked for, for this other thing. If you've asked for something and it has been provided, say, yes, we've received this, but we still want this. Mm -hmm. Because they are uh, I'm putting the ECSL in a light as if the ECSL is failing to respond to any of their demands, which is not true. They've asked us to provide this aggregated voter ratio of figures. We've told them that we cannot provide it as at then because of obvious reasons. And once we have dealt with all those issues, we have provided to the all political parties because we uploaded it in, in our website to all peoples of this country, the disaggregated <laughs> voter registration figures. If they want us to provide them voter register, well and good. Well, that they can say. We are not saying they do not have the right to ask us to provide them voter register. Besides, whether they ask us or not, we are going to provide them voter register. Okay? And that, I will assure you, is going to be given to them in the next couple of days, okay. okay? But to say or to even assume that voter register is given to political parties one month to election is untrue. In 2018, no political party can tell me that they were given the voter register months before the election. No, they could not because we always have processes. We always have things to do. Not only we have completed all of these activities that we can proceed to providing political parties with the voter register. That I will assure you, I will assure him and all other political parties that we are going to provide them with the voter register when we have concluded what we are doing and finalized everything that we are doing. Mr. Macaulay, is it that you get to make additional requests as he is putting it, that you get to send in your first uh, request and then you ask for something else? Okay. As, as I said, what he's been doing is to obfuscate the fact. He's been present at the PPLC meeting, which is the political parties liaison committee, which makes up of members of political parties, PPLC and security forces and NEC. And this is where we iron out and smoothen, you know, um, differences that we have. I've been present on two different occasions, and he's been present. In fact, I believe he answered that question that day, about six or seven weeks ago, when Dr. Richard Conte verbally and in person in the meeting openly requested NEC, uh, ECSL, when are you going to give us the disaggregated voter register? The answer was, Oh, we will provide it to you. But again, he's talking about evidence here. Um, having requested severally, and ECSL having refused, the APC consulted its lawyers, which is Tana Legal Advisory. And on the 24th of May 2023, Tana Legal Advisory, on behalf of the APC, wrote a letter to NEC demanding the voter register. And paragraph 8, of that, of that letter reads that our clients cannot emphasize enough the critical importance of providing the final disaggregated voter register to our clients to enable its officials observe, monitor, and evaluate the forthcoming June 23rd, 24th general elections. And the ECSL's refusal and or tardiness to provide our clients with the said voter register in good time would gravely undermine the credibility and acceptability of the elections and its outcome. So to say that we have not clearly in writing 
and verbally requested the voter register, you know, at best is disingenuous. You know, let me say this. NEC should know that they have a responsibility not only to ensure that we have free, fair, and credible elections, but also to ensure that, you know, the public does have access to information. You know, when you look at the, the ECSL, ECSL is a member of international bodies. Sierra Leone is a member of a body of nations. And that, that body of nation has what we call international standards, which each and every member is held to. And when you look at the guidelines provided by the Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance, they clearly said that the voter register should be, make, should be made accessible by electoral bodies to any person that seeks the information and at no cost. I mean, let us ask Nick, ECSL, what <laughs> does it cost you in terms of cash and a reputation to release the voter register? He's telling us they are still working. Mm. If and that he's is, giving you assurance. If, if, that is the case, now. if that is the case, they are telling us they are still working on it. Mm. If that is the case, then he's clearly admitting <laughs> here that um, Nick has been ill prepared or sleeping in, its, in, in, in executing its, its, its duty. And it was the same thing they did with the, the, the voter registration. The APC demanded that, let us do what we call a pilot voter registration, so that we will be able to identify the glitches and itches that will come up. They refused. And guess what? The first week of the voter registration, there were problems all over the place, but if we had done the pilot voter registration, we would have known that batteries don't last long. We would have known that computers do not respond to, 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 to um, 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 commands. And all of those little, little, little glitches that caused the voter registration to be disrupted will not have been disrupted if they've been listening okay. to what political parties are saying. The fact that APC says something usually is seen as neckers, we cannot go near it. No, what we are doing is to make sure we bring issues to the fore so that we can have a very open and credible discussion and see how we can handle these issues. Okay. That is all. Let's bring um, Bain to, Mohamed Bain to this conversation. Um, is, is the SLPP um, so far satisfied with um, the post systems and processes of the Electoral Commission um, um, the, in terms of um, issuing out the voter register, as he mentioned, and other processes. Are you satisfied? Well, um, Lamara, good morning, and thank you very much for having me. Um, we, um, the Salem People's Party, we are equally so looking forward to receiving the disaggregated data, um, you know, at um, polling station level across the country, because that will definitely aid, you know, the efficiency of the um, political party, us, to ensure that we are able to monitor um, know the actual voters that should vote in a particular polling station across the country. Um, having said that, I think to a very large extent, we have been deeply involved um, with the ECSL in terms of uh, engagement, you know, on their electoral processes until where we are at the moment. And to a very large extent, even though there were some challenges, you know, at the initial stage, but the Salem People's Party has been understanding enough with some of those challenges in ensuring that you know, um, NEC is allowed to, um, ECSL is allowed to, you know, um, conduct this election um, free and fair, despite those challenges. So, as a political party, we are equally looking forward to receiving the, the data, the disaggregated data, because the significance of that cannot be overemphasized. It, you know, it will not only benefit the APC or the SLPP, even other political parties, because only then you have polling stations that to be able to know if a voter comes in that, yes, I was registered here and I am here to vote, and you look at the data, and that data should be shared amongst um, every you know, participating uh, um, um, partners that will be in that particular polling center. Say, for example, the NEC officers, the political party polling agents, even um, elections observers within that particular center, they'll be able to verify that, yes, indeed, this um, individual was registered here, look at his face and his name, match uh, you know, um, the name that is uh, 
uh, matches the name that is uh, in his or her ID card. Mm -hmm. So we are equally looking forward to that, you know. But generally, I must admit that uh, the ECSL um, has done, you know, um, a, great, a great deal of work, you know, generally to a very large extent, because taking into account, you know, the challenges, you know, um, that uh, they, they faced initially mm -hmm. and how they'll be able to conduct, especially getting political parties along, that is key. And they've been calling political parties, I want to admit on behalf of the SLPP that we've been witnessing those political, attending those political party, um, party meetings and sharing, discussing, you know, for every stage, I want to believe they have been calling political parties, ensuring that they share just those challenges with those political parties and ensuring that they have a common ground and see how they're able to address most of these issues. So if you ask me on behalf of the Silent People's Party whether we are satisfied, we are equally looking forward to the um, data, definitely, but to a very large extent, I want to um, um, submit that um, despite the challenges, we've been so understanding and the conduct of the election so far, the entire electionary process to a very large extent, you know, they've done their best in ensuring that we are able to conduct the elections free, efficiently and fairly so that anybody who, you know, everybody will have equal opportunity to actually participate, especially voters, and know and monitor also um, those processes until the final day. Is it safe to say you have trust in the ECSL and um, the, their processes ahead of the elections? Well, to a very large extent, you know, like I you know, stated earlier, Amadou, it will be difficult to come here and say, you know, we are 100% satisfied with what they've been doing so far. But again, this is not the first time we've been in this country. ECSL has been facing challenges prior to national elections. This is not the first time, to be honest. But my admiration has always been that they've mustered the courage to get the political parties along and ensuring that they share those challenges that they face along the line with the political parties and both them and the political parties have been agreeing on some um, um, challenges you know, in the past mm. to where we are at the moment. So I think I'm comforted on behalf of the SLPB by that. You know, um, I don't want to go back to history. You understand? I don't want to go back to history because I'm not the official PRO for the ECSL. But yeah, what, I'm saying, yeah, we, what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying, to a very large extent, yeah, the party has trust in them. Yeah, to a very, yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? You, well, you, to you, a very large extent, because they've exhibited that. Mm -hmm. They've never taken a unilateral decision, and all the concerns being raised by political parties, they've took, uh, taken time to look into some of those issues, and and coming out with you know positions. Okay. So to a very large extent, even though there were challenges, like Ari was saying, um, initially, you know, the um, challenges of the registration, yes, you know, all of those, but, uh, you know, they, they, they come back and engage these political parties and all together, we map out the way forward in addressing those challenges. So for the fact that they recognize that and they have been doing that, I think it's a plus on behalf, you know, on behalf of the SLPP to the ECSL that they've been having the political parties along in addressing some of these challenges, there's no doubt mm -hmm. there have been challenges. But I'm happy that the um, director has consented, and this is the public TV, you know, um, that the ECSL is committed to providing the disaggregated data as soon as possible because we are days, uh, weeks into the, uh, you know, away from the election. So the SFP is equally looking forward to receiving that. Okay, let me go over to Mohammed. Um, on two occasions now, we've had um, instances where, you know, citizens are complaining of the quality of the cards, even that we move, even though we've moved past that. But again, what drew my attention to that is the fact that there are people who have laminated those ID cards, and it was clear from the ECSL that you asked, there was no need. So. For one, for those who have gone to the extent to laminate those cards through the videos we, we I saw, what will be the plans for them if they, they, they go to vote? Yeah, okay. Um, before that, let me just um, comment on what my mm -hmm. brother said with regards the international best practice. Of course, he made clear reference that international best practice requires that um, the CSA provides voter register to political parties free of cost. And of course, Mr. Macaulay, the ECS is going to provide voter register free of cost. And That's an assurance. Sure, it <laughs> is. <laughs> it is. Not two days before the Not a week before the election. Let me call. Not two call. weeks before the election. Uh, uh, we uh, need it now. You see, you see, sometimes it's good to go back memory lane. Mm -hmm. In 2018, 
DCSA provided the voter register to political parties within two weeks to the polls. You know, probably he, he could remember because, you know, he was a part of the governing party by then, so probably he could remember. But that's a fact. You understand? Know, was different. Nothing whatsoever. So sometimes when people make, make you and cry in over issues, we need to look, we need to think and reflect on how things have been happening. And it has been happening in that manner, and we've been comfortable with it. And it has been happening in that manner because of certain reasons. And those reasons will still continue to exist because election is a process. Okay, we have, more than two weeks ago, provided political parties disaggregated voter ration <coughs> data by centers, figures, which is required for their planning purposes. We have also uploaded on our website the number of polling stations per center, mm -hmm. which is required for their planning. So if they are talking about planning, for instance, <coughs> political parties want to uh, um, determine how many party agents they need <coughs> for the election or in a district. What they need is the number of polling stations which they have. If they are planning on uh, uh, um, so many other activities, they will need the number of registered voters per centre, which they have. The voter register, they will have. And like I've said, within the next couple of days, that is going to be provided to all political parties. Um, with regards to education on voter cards, um, we have said it over, over and again, that laminating voter registration cards really doesn't make a difference. Whether you laminate it or not, it makes little difference to us as a commission because your information will still be legible. Your voter ID card will be legible and that is what your name and other details are legible. Those are what we are going to use to verify your information on the voter register. By the way, again, coming to this issue of voter registration cards and uh, identification of voters, mm -hmm. we have said it again and again that this year said cognizance of some of these issues. Mm -hmm. We have decided to, one, enlarge the pictures on the voter register, so as to make them more legible, to be able to verify the voter who is standing before the voter identification officer and the picture on the register. Two, the voters on the voter register are going to be printed all in color. Three, the number of uh, 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 um, voters that we normally have on a, voter on a page on the voter register is 20. Mm -hmm. that, that has been reduced to 15. To broaden up, to open, to enlarge mm -hmm. the pictures of all those who are on the voter register. All of these are geared towards ensuring that we have credibility in the process. So that if you come before a voter identification officer, you have your face on the, uh, on the register. The voter identification officer can look at your face and look at the, the face on the register and match it to and confirm that you are who you are. So again, the, uh, the insinuations that the voter registration card, because some pictures are darkened, is going to be used to, uh, to let unauthorized voters vote on behalf of others, it's completely untrue, except if you don't understand how election operates. But if you, if you understand the processes, if you understand that you can even go to a, a polling center, let's assume you've lost your voter card. You can even go to a polling center. Your name and details will be looked for in the voter register. Once found, your face is on the voter register, and that face is going to be matched with you who, who is standing mm. right in front of the voter register. So that's officer. to calm the fears of those who've misplaced theirs? Pardon? To calm the fears of those who've misplaced theirs? Yes, yes, of course. Yet still, we still uh, encourage voters to protect the voter cards, mm. and for those who are yet to collect the voter cards, to go and collect them. Because not having a voter, a voter card, whilst it will not prevent you from voting, it will inconvenience you on voting day. Yeah. Inconvenience, inconvenience in the sense, you, if you go 
to a polling station and you meet a queue, you'll be asked to wait. Because processing you will take much longer time compared to processing someone with a voter card. But, but ultimately, you will not be disenfranchised. Okay. You will ultimately vote. We have some questions. There's a question here I want to read. Um, it's from uh, Marcos Levy. Says, um, do we have data protection policies in Sierra Leone? If yes, then the names and addresses of voters should not be released to to any political party. Otherwise, the rights of the voters are being breached. Will you want to comment on that? Did yes, the this is very much conscious of that, and these are something we we'll also make a reference to um, when the political parties ask us to provide a comprehensive detail of uh, voter uh, of voters. Okay, the law also protects that the uh, uh, personal details of voters should be protected. So in the voter uh, 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 register that is going to be provided, of course some key information are going to be taken out. Okay. For Thank instance, there's no way we can provide a voter register with the telephone numbers of voters. Mm -hmm. We cannot do that. Okay. So there are definitely key information that are going to be taken out, but not information that will affect the credibility of the process. The basic information for us in election, the, the basic information of the voter is the name, the picture, See. voter ID card. Those are core. Not because the address the, because or telephone number. No, the voter ID card is a unique identifier mm. for, for election. The voter ID number is the only unique identifier. Even your name is not a, a unique identifier when it comes to elections. Okay, um, let's take some few messages. Um, Kamo Thomas says, I'm well confident and believe that this election will be conducted in a free, fair, transparent, credible manner, just like the 2007 and 2012 election that was conducted by Dr. Christian Atop. Um, another one says, thank you to the ECSL guy. He's really educating the public. Samuel Fancy says the ECSL has done well so far, but they can do much better. We the people are just demanding for free, fair elections. Um, well, Abdul, these are not connected to what we are discussing. Yes, another one here, Abdul um, Latif Kabu says, can anyone tell me if what the APC is asking for is against the law or the ECSL just don't want to be transparent? And um, another one is from Abdul Kamara. He's asking, there is a video going around of um, some people cleaning ballot boxes. Can the ECSL man comment on that? Mm, this has already been answered, but you can please reiterate. And the Alpha Rogers is saying, what if I have lost my voter's ID? And I've also... Um, try the ECSL to work on election day in different location from where I registered. Can I be allowed to vote? Well, okay, the other of, of, Can of I the be question? Okay, what if I have lost my voter's ID and I've also tried the ECSL to vote on election day in a different location from where I registered? Can I be allowed to vote? Without an ID card. He lost, mm -hmm. uh, the person lost his or ID card and yeah. wanted to go and vote in another um, center where uh, they did not register. Yeah. Completely true. impossible. Possible. Yes, that is it's impossible. impossible. Uh, you cannot vote in. The, the basic principle is you vote where, where you register. You register. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you need That's to present. If, if, if you go where an you ID. register and you don't have an ID, mm -hmm. they can check through the voter. Exactly. Exactly. Vote. Okay, we are, we are learning. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll take one final one and then um, we continue. Uh, please, Manso Kanu says, please, say, the peace of this nation is in your hands. Favor no party, let the loser be the loser and the winner be the winner in a genuine way. Please, ECSL. Um, Adi, as, as, as we try to, to, to round up this conversation, I want to ask you, um, is there an issue of trust between the APC? Because to a very large extent, the, the SLPP seems comfortable with the systems and processes, even though they still have some other concerns. Is there an issue of trust between the ECSL and, and, and APC as the main opposition? Lamarana, certainly there is an issue of trust between the APC and the and ECSL. Mm. Um, we don't trust them um, for obvious reasons. One is that um, the ECSL at present is being run like a secret society where each and every information that we, 
the end users, the customers of ECSL are supposed to have, they are shrouding it in some enigma. Like what? And secondly, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll once, beaten, once beaten, twice shy. Mm -hmm. um, you can recall the by-elections in Kabbalah for the ward seat in 155. We are clearly um, the APC candidate for that um, council seat was winning. And um, it turned out that um, the RRF from which the SLPP had, which the APC had, in a particular station, showed that the SLPP candidate had 49 uh, 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 votes. And when the votes were being tallied at the Wellington Industrial Estate, um, the inputter placed one in front of the 49. It became 149. We protested there. No one heard us. And the only thing that the commission had then that was present was, oh, we can complain, but this is what they've inputted. And we complained, and they refused to change it, even though the SLPP IRF form showed that this particular candidate had 49, but the inputter had placed one before the 49, it became 149. And we wanted to take legal action, to petition that particular result. But the law requires that you cannot petition an election result if it is not gazetted. As I speak, he can confirm it. That result has not been gazetted, so we cannot challenge it in court. Notwithstanding that, Joseph Fitzgerald Kamara wrote several letters to the ECSL um, commissioner, chairman, to gazette. We were not asking him to do something that was outside of his scope. We are asking him to do something which the law demands that he does in, in fulfillment of his, his duties. You know, let me tell you something. Um, he can confirm that um, we don't even know how many ballot papers have been printed. Um, we don't know who printed them. We don't know when they are arriving. In 2007, I can still recall, the late Solomon Ekumabera, who was the vice president then, and who was the flag bearer candidate for the SLPP, was at Lunge together with senior APC officials to receive the ballot, box, the ballot papers when they were delivered by air to Sierra Leone. As at now, we don't know exactly what is going on. And ECSL has secretly developed a tallying system, which they've not shared with anyone. I mean, we have to audit the system. The Once beaten, twice shy. The Take, for example, the indelible link. What is wrong for us now to test that indelible link to satisfy everybody that it cannot be washed off? Mr. These are the issues. There are issues of trust between the APC and the SLPP, and they are founded. Uh, and this issue of trust with... Uh, sorry, the, the ECSL. <laughs> with, 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 with this level of, 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 you know, not having trust for the, the body that is conducting the elections, uh, the processes and all of that, and the concerns you've raised, what the assurance of the APC accepting the outcome of this election? It is for them to prove us otherwise. Mm. It is for them to with immediate effect um, um, and make the, 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 the register accessible to us, with immediate effect, give us supervised access to the tallying system that they are going to use to transmit and collate election results. I mean, you cannot take us to the slaughterhouse blind. We are me. like 18 days to the elections. You think they can do things for you to gain their trust? Well, if they meet all these demands, I believe is a step towards us gaining trust in the ECSL. I mean, let, let, me, let me give you this. The APC, all the political parties and ECSL must be friends because without the political parties, there will be no ECSL. Without the ECSL, the political parties cannot achieve what they want. All we are demanding is information which will allow us to be better prepared. But Don't you at the PPLC meeting. Okay, okay. Let, let me, we, we've done that. Let me give you this. And you don't you share information? Le at PPLC le 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 let me give you this. Obviously. Lamana, Obviously Lamana, he knows that one. Yes, they give excuses at PPLC meetings. <laughs> um, let me give you this. When, when someone like was you. asking question about, you know, confidentiality, I mean, when the voter, provisional voter register was exhibited, I mean, I, I, sh I agree with you. You cannot put someone's address, someone's um, date of birth, someone's telephone number in there. I mean, it can be misused. 
but the name, the photo, and the particular word or area where they'll be voting is essential for us. And you know, people went to the various centers, they, they, they registered, they verified their names and their photos, and when they eventually received their voter cards, they have different phases and different names. And this is the reason why we are demanding that. Do it well in time, in good time, so that if, if, if there's a problem, and it has happened in the past, <coughs> people go to uh, 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 polling stations, present their voter ID cards. They go through the register, they say, no, your name not in How can you solve that problem? Let's, let's, you cannot let's... solve that problem that particular day, which is why we are asking, give us this register well in time, so that people will be able to know whether their names are there or not. If not, then they can, they can be remedied. That is all we are asking. Let, let, Nothing let's... extraordinary or out of the ordinary. Let's hear from the director. You see, the premise upon which my brother has built this case is flawed in, in itself. You, know, you cannot say give the voter register so that people can tell where they are, where are their names is on the register or whatever. You understand? Now, you see, let's talk about trust. Mm -hmm. Trust is seen the APC doesn't trust the ECS. Uh, it's unfortunate because we would love to be trusted by all, but the fact remains um, you cannot compel somebody to trust. Or you cannot compel an institution to trust another institution. Now, we've done all on our part to ensure that we conduct credible elections. And what we've been doing has been, incons has been consistent with legal provisions, with procedures, with international standards. <coughs> now, um, and sometimes when we give out information to the public, um, it's good to be fair. Mr. McCauley is saying, as of now, um, we don't, they don't even know who is printing the ballot paper. This is in public view. This information is in the public domain. I, I, I recall last week when the chairperson of the commission made a presentation to the steering committee mm. where journalists were present. The chairperson mentioned the vendor who is printing ballot paper. And that was, was all over the news. So how can you sit here and say that it, it is a secret with regards to the, the vendor printing ballot paper? It is not, for goodness sake. Sometimes let us be honest with our conscience. <coughs> it, talking about in 2007, Solomon Berewa and the like, we are at the airport receiving ballot papers. Ballot papers are yet to arrive, so how can you go there and receive. So wait until ballot papers come and you're not informed, and then you can raise concerns. So mm -hmm. sometimes it, it is as if they are prejudging uh, um, the CSL negatively, all in a bid to smear the good image of the commission. And by the way, we, we as a commission, we have conducted several elections in the past years. 2007, which brought the APC to power, 2012, which brought the same APC to power, 2018, which brought the SFP to power. And this same crop of people who, who, who conducted these elections, 80% of us were in the commission when, uh, when these elections were conducted. Mm -hmm. And we are still determined to ensure that we continue conducting credible elections that meet international standards and meet the legal obligations. How do you think you can gain their trust? Well, like I said, you know, you know we are doing what we, we ought to do. Again, probably the challenge here is this. Sometimes the APC thinks they have to dictate or direct the CSL in doing what they want to do. And that is, of course, not possible. The CSL is an independent institution. You can say we want this. If we believe <coughs> it is not in the interest of all and it is against the procedure, it is against the, the legal framework, we will not do it because the, the CSL is an independent institution. Okay, but the software, software is created by ECSA staff. You see, you know, sometimes let's, let's 
learn also to trust our own people. It is not because we do not have foreigners parading the corridors of the ECSL that you think the ECSL is, is capable of conducting an election. We are capable because we are respected internationally, we are respected uh, 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 um, based on what we've been doing in the past years. We, the vendor is public information. I wonder how comes you're not aware of it. It has been on the news. Mm -hmm. And today, fortunately, is the PPLC meeting. You go there. I'm sure you'll be given more information. But okay. to say, including the voter register. But to say, mm. but to say th that we are sh shrouding things in secrecy <coughs> with regards who is printing the ballot paper is not okay. for goodness sake. Okay, let's we, be honest with our we need, to, we need to end this conversation. And but let let's let's move to to buy. It seems it, you, you 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 haven't got much on this conversation because the. SLPP um, seems okay with the processes of um, the ECSL. Uh, but as we move down to um, elections, it's 18 days now, and we're still, political parties are still campaigning, the APC and the SLPP and other political parties are still campaigning. Um, Adi just mentioned about their, their lack of trust in the ECSL. Uh, what, what, what could this mean for the elections as, as a political party? One of the ruling political party and the two main contenders in the election? Well, it will be difficult for me, you know, uh, or the SLPP to say, you know, anything in that regard because mm. the APC should be in position to state the reasons why... But the APC has already why. said they, they, they lack trust in the system. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm but, but asking if the, APC, it, it, the SLPP it, has any position on that. Well, you know, to a very large extent, that is their own position, you okay. know, and, and it is also important that when we make positions we support those positions with uh, um, facts fact. or or you when know clear that. you know um, on aligned issues mm -hmm. that you will predicate you know your submissions on in saying that you don't have trust but that I will leave that for the EPC and the ECSL. No, I understand. For, for, the for, for, for the, the SLPP. But, but you have trust and confidence in the process. And you like, I, like, I stated earlier, like I stated earlier, Amadou, mm -hmm. there were challenges. And mm -hmm. until now, there are still challenges. But the SLPP is comforted by the fact that the ECSL has been able to communicate those challenges. And they have not at but any point in time. Let me rephrase my question. Are you concerned or worried as a ruling political party that the main opposition um, parties saying they do not trust the electoral body. Are, are you concerned? Or do you have concerns or are you worried about this as a ruling party? Well, you know, for me, it boils down to the fact that they need to advance reasons why they say they do not trust the ECSL at this particular point. But I did just mention so, 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 yeah, all of those issues, I think the director has actually addressed eight. those issues. I'm, you know, I actually don't easy. want, I actually don't want us to get this conversation between um, for us, as a political party, what yeah, we you're the are only focusing party, now, that is why I'm asking. Yeah, we, what, what, we, what we are focusing now, Amadou, on is to ensure that we continue with our campaigns and sell our messages to the public and that we are hopeful. And you have seen, and plenty of people across the country have seen, how those messages have been resonating with the aspirations of these people. Wherever the president goes, that is our focus at the moment, because wherever, where we are now, where we are now, no matter you know, the, you know, the very positions. I think we are in the middle now, and we, all of us as political parties should come together, including, you know, the APC, to join forces with the e, um, ECSL and see where we can be able to dialogue and also collaborate and ensure that we have the elections come June 2024. So those um, 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 messages coming from the lead, you know, I don't know, somebody as senior as Adi Macaulay on behalf of the APC, to, avail, to some extent, it is worrying, I must admit, to some extent. And also, we saw a video a couple of days back where no less a person but the uh, um, um, flag bearer of the All People's Congress, Dr. Samura Kamara, claiming that they will rig the elections. You understand? So all of these messages coming from um, top officials of the APC, to a very large extent, is worrying. But we are encouraging them that, yes, indeed, there might be challenges, there might be cons they, they will have concerns. But all of us should come together in ensuring that we present those concerns and we see how those concerns can, could be okay. addressed moving forward. But for us as a political party, Amadou, we are focused. The president has done enough in the last five years. 
and we have presented our five big changes for the next five years and we are focusing now across the country according to the campaign calendar to propagate our vision for the next five years to okay. the people of this country and ensuring Thank that President Bill has a resounding re-election victory. Thank you very much, Mohamed Elba, from the campaign uh, 20, team of uh, June the Ruling Sheldon People's Party. Mr. Tui, someone was asking about um, video of, of ballot some ballot boxes, yeah, if you want to clarify that. Yes, um, yeah. Um, the past couple of days, we um, gave instruction to our field staff to clean up the ballot boxes in preparation for the elections, of course. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we have used these ballot boxes since 2018. They've been uh, um, stocked in our uh, warehouses, uh, sorry, facilities nationwide. Mm -hmm. So they we are cleaning up these ballot boxes, and then somebody went there to video and start insinuating that cleaning ballot boxes means elections mm -hmm. cannot be credible. For goodness sake, what's the correlation? That if if you have kept your cloth in the wardrobe for five years, three, four years, and it's time to, to use it. What will you do? Just clean it up first. Mm. So we are just cleaning ballot boxes. We have more than 38,000 ballot boxes nationwide. Again, uh, um, there have been some misconceptions um, about uh, social media with regards uh, getting ballot boxes from Guinea, etc., and the whatever whatever insinuations be made. Mm -hmm. These ballot boxes are there to complement the ballot boxes we already have. It doesn't mean we do not have ballot boxes within country, no. We have much more okay. ballot boxes. But of course, when we are planning, you know, Mr. Macaulay was saying it's, it seems as if we are, we are, we, we are ill-prepared. Mm -hmm. But no, we are not. When we plan, we plan in advance. So we want enough ballot boxes for the first round, and in the event there's a second round, we have enough ballot boxes for the second round. And also remember, in October, we are going to conduct Related election. We also need to have ballot boxes standby. So okay. it is all for these reasons that we went to Conakry and, 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 and requested for complimentary ballot boxes of 11,000. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Adi, what's, what will be your final comment? As well, we like I said, we would love to trust the ECSL because we have no alternative body to conduct elections for us. But how can we trust ECSL? when we still have someone working at ECSL at present that changed voting figures for the SLPP from 49 to 149. No action taken, he's still working there and they expect us to trust that person. Would you? Would you? No, he wouldn't. And I'm happy that he has not responded to that complaint. But again, I am happy you've clarified that under section 41 of the uh, um, and Public Elections Act of 2022. Um, if you don't have your voter card for whatever reasons, um, you will still be allowed to vote, provided the registration officer or the presiding officer can reasonably identify you as the person whose name is on the register. So I would encourage everyone that do not have their voter card to look for alternative forms of ID card, your driving license, which is okay. issued by the government, passport, your national identity card. Once you have that and you go to the polling, I am sure Director Ture can agree with me that the law requires that they be allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Section 41. That's lift my attention, but um, it's as if Mr. Macaulay is taking advantage of, of that one. Mm -hmm. um, what he has been alluding to regarding one, the failure of the CSL to gazette uh, by election result is untrue. Mm. We have gazetted all by election results. Sure. We have. Sure. They are there. Sure. Of course, go to, go, go to, to the government. We have, it's not there. It's there. We've checked. You understand? So to come out in the public and not present there. such a false information is disingenuous. And to it's say, insulting. now we have. For all ele elections, there have always been instances wherein, in the process of tallying results, we have um, results forms filled wrongly. And when results forms are filled wrongly, we always have responsibility 
of correcting the <laughs> formula so that it reconciles Whoa. because the result is a reconciliation and result form and for all talent processes sometimes our guys in the field will input figures in the result and reconciliation form and then these figures fail to, to reconcile and because of the checks and balances put into the system in the software of the zone management it will not accept it. So, so all it always requires. We are equally I'm coming, yeah, please. I'm coming, I'm coming, please. Yeah, let him just you understand? We, we, we're going to be on time. Uh, it always requires that somebody deal with reconciliation purposes. And that is what was done. No more, no less. Mr. Macaulay knows that one. So to no. start casting allegations on people without evidence, you know, yeah, lawyer, by the way. Blame so, so, so Blame I, Blame I, I really hope the, the point you've is been this. a lawyer. He's when saying you that there was a mistake no. made by the, by the, by the um, ECSL um, 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 person that was filling in the form. He wants to tell no, me. No, no. The SL, no, no, just no, no, hold on no, for no, me. No, the no, SLPP agent they... that was there that signed the form, the APC agent that was there that signed the form, the AGC agent that was there that signed the form, all of them were wrong, did not know what we were, we, they were doing. Mr. They stood there, Let they us... saw someone filling in figures that are not supposed to be, need, to be there, and they accepted it. Not at all. You want to clarify quickly? We need to close. Mr. Macaulay, we, we need to no, no, I'm, you see, you see, I don't want to yes. go into this for tax issue yes, with exactly. this because I'm change. sure this issue has been yeah. laid to rest. Mm. Mr. Macaulay is a lawyer <coughs> and it is unfortunate for him to be speaking that Speak evidence. To the facts, so uh, uh, um, let's discuss the issues. It is very clear that what he said is untrue. Okay. There is the result and constitution form as evidence to the effect that the result inputted in that is correct and accurate. Mohamed Touré from the Electoral Commission for Sierra Leone, Adi Makoli from Thank the you very much. and Mohamed Ba from the SLPP. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Welcome. It's a pleasure. This is where we end today's edition of Wake Up Sierra Leone. Our quote for today says, uh, the ballot is stronger than the bullets, and it comes from Abraham Lincoln, an American lawyer, politician, and statesman. Well, we say thank you to our sponsor, Local Commercial Bank, for their support to this program. Continue to watch AYV throughout today as we have exciting programs coming up till tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.